It's great, though. All right, we got our, our next set coming up here. I love the Disneyland hoodie from JoJo. That thing's awesome. You a Disneyland fan or no? Yes. Yeah. I, I, was in, I was born in Florida and lived there for eight years, so I would go to Disneyland or Disney World all the time. Okay. I think I, I remember going to Disneyland, like, once or twice, but the problem is I was five years old, so I remember absolutely nothing. Yeah, I was, like, eight, and I, w I w did it when I was, like, three through eight. And I went there a lot. Parents need to stop taking their kids to amusement parks and expensive vacations when they're too young to remember. I wish my parents had just waited a few more years so I could remember it. Sometimes I, I feel like... I remember some of it, but I barely remember any. I feel like it's an excuse for the parents, right? <laughs> like, they just... Like, it's the only things that I hated with that I remembered. Like, I would go three rides that were water rides I would be wearing normal clothes or it would either be raining okay <laughs> no, normal clothes meaning not anything <laughs> my man water. coming up in a suit and jacket ready to go on the log flume <laughs> okay the real question is on the log flume do you sit in the front or the back what's the meta I usually sit in the front is that just because you don't want to get crushed see I don't know <laughs> It really depends on the log flume, though. Sometimes if it's got, like, a really flat front, it'll push all the water out of the way so you don't get wet in the front, which is such a scam. Like, if I'm sitting in the front, I'm clearly here to have a good time and get extremely moist. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the people in the back have all that, uh, the side arrow pulling the water in. Anyway, uh, getting into this set, we got Jojo to Hobo and Tuna on stream. I know my man here, Doom Duck, loves campy characters. You like Toon Link? Totally. I love yeah. Toon Link. Yeah, so you just much. love Toon Link. The only Toon Link I like is JoJo's. <laughs> JoJo's yeah. Toon Link, I'm a big fan of. This dude walked up to me earlier and was like, I hate Zona. I was like, me too, buddy. I, I said, <laughs> I said too. that I hate campy characters, and then he said, me too. Yeah. Because okay? every. I don't. The only per people who like campy characters are the people who play them. We can shake on that. Zoners are. Um, you know, there, there are characters in the game. JoJo, though, doing a great job with his uh, more aggro Toon Link, honestly, today. He's very good at switching up his playstyle with Toon Link, depending on what he's given in the set. At the moment, we see him slowing down a little bit, but he is more than happy to box. Maybe boxing a little bit too much there as he over-aggresses and gets hit a little bit too much, but he turned it around. Okay, Tuna already on the back foot in this set. He needs to make something happen before JoJo starts to run away with this game because one thing about zoners is they can zone you out. Yeah, Tuna's already down a stop. So. And then JoJo's using a lot less bombs. Like like you said, he's, a he's di playing a lot differently because of the set that he's in. Yeah, it's so easy to get out of control. Oh, I think JoJo messed up a little bit there. He ran off and then jumped and burned his double jump so Still he couldn't well. punish. Still doing well, though. Yeah. The thing is, he has the opportunity here where if he makes those little mistakes, he can just back off and play safe. And since he plays his owner, Tuna still has to approach him. And he's up a whole stock now. JoJo's doing great. Tuna needs to make something happen fast. Those Zares putting in so, so much work. I usually don't see JoJo hitting those Zo Zares nearly this often. Well, it looks like it's just who wants the stage. Well, I, most sets are like that, but jo JoJo's fighting for the stage. Like, Yeah, it does. It kind of feels like Tuna gets in and he just kind of swings. Yeah. Meanwhile, JoJo's taking a much more measured approach. Now, of course, that is kind of Tuna's job in this set, playing Greninja versus Toon Link is to get in and swing at him, but the, the options are being so well taken care of by JoJo. He's just ready for them every time. I'm surprised there was no punish on that down air. That looks super unsafe. Okay, if I'm Tuna here, I'm starting to think about game two because 149, 152, my man's still not dead. Meanwhile, Tuna's JoJo's here on his last stock. JoJo's up by two stocks, and then Tuna's on his last stock, and then JoJo's doing really well. 
Yeah, this is looking rough. Tuna needs to just get some momentum. If he wants any chance in the next game, he needs to make something happen here. Because sometimes, you know, it's not about winning that first game. It's about figuring things out and adapting. Yeah, if you start out this far behind. It doesn't look like Tuna's, like, haven't, hasn't yet adapted to JoJo. But JoJo's doing good, oh. amazing staying alive. Okay. That was rough. That's not how you want to go out. Is my man Krogan still playing? What is this dude doing out here? He's playing like best of five JDV sets or something? What's happening? I'm not even supposed to be on comms right now. This is a scam. <laughs> All right. Uh, JoJo up 1-0 against Tuna. That looked super solid. Honestly, not surprised to see a character switch coming out from Tuna. Whatever he was doing in the first game just wasn't working. So... Let's see if this works a little bit better. One, and maybe chat knows this a little bit better. Is he a Greninja main, Bowser Jr. main? Does anybody in chat know exactly what the deal is here? Because i definitely like to know. I'm not super he, familiar. He with was Tuna. definitely a Greninja in my database. Okay. Good to know. I trust the database. I'm a man of numbers. He's falling up air combo from JoJo. Another thing we don't see a lot from him in his uh, his typical play. It's always exciting when you get to see like the depth of matchup knowledge and you know just in general like engagement distance knowledge from these high level players because it always looks like they're doing the same stuff over and over. But as soon as they get the opportunity against someone who's playing a weird character or a, a different play style, you can see all of that deepest lore come out as they do these other things that they know about that you're just not ready for. Lucas is in chat saying, it's his Wi-Fi main. Oh no, not a Wi-Fi main. <laughs> you hate to see the Wi-Fi main. That said though, I could only make fun so much because he's already done more damage with his first stock than he did in the entirety of the last game. So maybe he just played too much Wi-Fi this week. Sometimes that happens. And you know, you get to bracket late and you're not warmed up. Meanwhile, Tuna looking really solid right now. That said, 160, there we go. The falling up air. Once again, that's all it takes. Ooh, double bombs on the platform. Early combo is going to start coming out from JoJo here. Only able to get 18% off before Tuna gets out. But now we're in, we're in zoner land. You have to kill the Toon Link, or the Toon Link's just going to run away with it. There we go. Finally, Tuna making something happen. His first kill of the set, and that's not a knock to him. That's just to show how adept JoJo is at playing that safe game. This is where we start to see if JoJo can adapt to this new game plan coming out from Tuna. Because he has certainly figured out what was going wrong. He's been able to adjust his play style, able to make something happen with this character change. But now the onus is on JoJo to keep it from going the other way. And just like that, Tuna up a stock. He was at like, what, 60% when that happened? Welcome to Bowser Jr., everybody. This character's a low tier, remember that. Bowser, jo Bowser Jr. plays Factorio or some <laughs> yeah. shit. Like, he, he's like, all right, I have a shipping plant here. I've got distribution here. You Yo, know. he does, though. Had to calculate that and build it. Nuts. I can totally see that. Bowser Jr. on the computer. Dad comes in all angry. It's 2 a.m. Tells him to go to bed. Just one more turn, Dad. I need to line up my... What do they have in that game? What's the big pool of that game? It's like the conveyor belts, right? Conveyor belt optimization? Them, yeah. <laughs> Just need to route these one more time. So that my nuclear reactors could, I, I don't know, I don't play this game. It just feels like something. I can gain 5% uh, efficiency if I, if <laughs> exactly. I just cut through here. <laughs> yeah, I, there I just is. finished blowing apart this cliff wall. I'm going to run a tunnel through it. It'll pre make me so much more efficient. Those games <laughs> are so <laughs> Wait, give me that sound one more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You need to make that as like a... A TTS option. <laughs> Every time someone donates to your solo stream, just get the play. 
All right, anyway, as we've been trolling, JoJo has brought this all the way back and then some. There we go. As soon as I start talking about him, he's like, okay, now I can get the kill. Now you're paying attention. And there we go. JoJo figured out what was going wrong, managed to adapt, and managed to take the set. Still great stuff from Tuna. That first game did not look good, if I'm being honest. It was a hard three stock with Tuna even SDing at the end with the Greninja, but the Bowser Jr. looked so much better. All right, and with that, we have JoJo advancing on winner's side. Great stuff to him. This bracket continuing to move along. We're starting off some of the winner's quarters matches. Not sure who we're going to have on this stream next. We'll find out very soon. I see my man Everest still in bracket against Cyan. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start like sneaking through, figure out what's going on. Okay.